Uh, it's now time for our Plus feature. Uh, and if you don't know, Plus delivers a wide range of health and well-being services that empower thousands of people to progress into work each year. And this week, on behalf of Plus Somerset, we're looking at a new initi- initiative funded by the UK Community Renewal Fund called Engage Somerset. Last month, we let with Lisa Pierce, who is the project manager for Engage Somerset, who told us all about this fantastic initiative, which is empowering communities in the towns of Highbridge, Glastonbury and Chard. And there you can see all the lovely community coaches. We have Josh, Charlotte, Claire, and we're very pleased to be joined this week by Julie Guyon, who is a community coach in the Chard area for Engage Somerset. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. How are you doing? I'm, yeah, I'm good. I can't hear you very well. It's quite distorted. Oh, Sorry. okay. No, that's another problem. Hope for, uh, our Mr. Engineer Man behind the scenes, that's not his official title, honestly, he's on the case right now for you. Um, hopefully we can continue on, though. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, Lisa explained a bit about this project when she joined us last month, but could you provide viewers with a bit of an overview into Engage Somerset and what it's all about? Yeah, um, basically, the Engage Somerset programme... Um, for me, I work in Chard and I work with anybody who's over 18 um, and not in paid employment. So we found that there's an awful lot of people now that are feeling very isolated, um, lonely. We've got other people that are looking um, for a job, but unfortunately they may have lost their confidence skills because people have been sort of shut away for so long. Mm. We've got other people that want to improve their health. Um, so we can do do things around that um and also we can help with digital skills so that could be very simple from downloading a photograph um onto your phone and sending it by email what i say to people is you tell me what you want and if i can't help you then i can probably probably find somebody that can help you. We have lots of different partnerships that we work with, but the overall thing of Engage is to inspire healthy change and help people live a better life, be that mentally or physically or emotionally. That's that's Engage in a nutshell. Fantastic. Um, it sounds absolutely lovely. I, lo- I love the uh, probably in there. You've got to, got to be- keep it safe, haven't you? But it, it sounds really good what you're trying to do. Could the- I know a little bit about- more about you, though. Can you tell us a bit more about your background and what led you to becoming a community coach for an Engage Somerset? Yeah. Can you, can you hear me OK? Yeah, we can hear you absolutely fine. Brilliant. Um, well, I was... Um, I initially a lot of my background was in um, sales um, but I was also worked within um, social services and then 19 or just yeah about 19 years ago I joined the police force Um, I started off as a call handler so I took the 999 calls um, general calls from the members of public I then became a supervisor and then approximately nine years ago I became a dispatcher So I used to dispatch the police officers over the radio. And then two and a half years ago, um, I decided I wanted to be a police community support officer. I didn't want to be a police officer. I wanted to be the nice police officer. Um, (laughs) So I worked out in the community um, with a a lot of people. I worked in a very deprived area in Taunton. Absolutely loved the job. Um, It was my dream job. But unfortunately, as a lot of things are now, the the job role changed and I was doing a lot more of what I would say police work. So I was investigating burglaries, assaults, et cetera, et cetera. And my time out in the community was just becoming less and less. And and that wasn't why I joined the role. Um, So if I'm very honest, I... um, spoke to my sister-in-law who works in plus and said to her got any jobs going and she pointed me in the right direction and I started with um, Engage on the 9th of February and I have to honestly say it's the best move I've ever made I thought I'd have regrets leaving the police obviously 19 years very secure employment I just love it so I'm back out in the community doing what I love 
Fantastic. I mean, what a background you have there. It's not a normal one by any means necessarily. You've clearly got a lot of experience working under pressure in very um, serious situations, but being able to keep the calm yourself, which I think obviously works perfectly for this kind of role, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm only literally getting every other word from you. So. So I do apologise. No, yes, all right. We'll, we'll continue trying to work on that. We're doing, we seem to be doing all right considering. So we'll try and continue onwards. Um, you've gone on a little bit about uh, the support people can uh, receive. What kind of support can people expect to receive from you? Well, as I said, um, emotionally. So obviously no names mentioned. Um, I um, have got a lady who's enrolled on the project initially just to join us on a walk. Um, and then she's now sort of, you know, as she gains confidence in me, she's disclosed to me a few problems that she's having. Um, so I will work with her on a one-to-one -one basis to see if we can provide her with any additional support she needs. It could be that she just needs an ear and somebody to listen to. Um, we've then got the gym. Um, we're working alongside Freedom Leisure, um, as you know. <clears throat> excuse me and they're offering eight weeks free membership <clears throat> excuse me one moment it's not covid i promise <clears throat> <laughs> um yeah so they're offering um an eight week free membership to the gym so that's all the classes you can use gym equipment the swimming pool um we also can offer um physical health as in walking we have got a fantastic walking group on a monday we've also got a buggy walk on a thursday we've also got some community groups um we've got a very big one on a wednesday which is the watch project which you know about um we also have another one there's one on a wednesday which is called take flight and another one on a wednesday at forefront we work with the um, employment agencies so we can help people back into work. There's also support, as I said, for people that want to um, learn more computer skills, but it's not just computer skills. Um, I've just spoken to a gentleman who's actually in his 80s and he'd like to learn how to use his mobile phone better so he can then stay in contact with his family. So it's everything. It's just fantastic. It's Anything that people are struggling with, as I said, if Engage can't help them, then there'll definitely be somebody we're working with um, to help you further, other than give you the lottery numbers, or I wouldn't be here. <laughs> well, I might be, actually, because I do love my job. <laughs> That's very fair. Um, I love that. Um, I've definitely had personal experience with trying to, in regards to, to uh, teaching someone maybe of an older generation with their mobile phone. That would be my mum. Sorry, mum, not to pick on you there. Um, but it is, uh, it's nice to see that there's people there to help with, with these kinds of things. Um, what would you say are some of the challenges faced by the community in the child area? The, the problem with Chard is is the, the community links, transport links, sorry, not community, transport links. There is a bus service, but it's very expensive. Um, the buses don't run regularly. I had one lady that went to Taunton, which is, Taunton's probably about 12 miles, I think, from Chard. So return, it cost her £10 on the bus. Um, she she missed the bus home and had to then wait another hour and a half for another bus. I mean, that's a long time and, and £10 is a lot of money to somebody that doesn't have money. Um, there's no train station here. A big part of um, charge as well is people say <clears throat> because of these um, transport links or lack of transport links, they do feel quite isolated. And and the other thing is, um, I think more is being done now, but there's not a job centre as such. Although more is happening, um, we get advisors coming in from Taunton into Chard and they sit up on a, every other Wednesday. And also we've got very good Abri there on Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. So what I'm trying, what I thought would be a great idea is I've got a bus driver that's looking for work. Why not pay him to drive a bus and we can ship everybody in and out of Taunton at a reduced fare, but I don't think it will take off. 
Hey, it's worth a try. It's that kind of thinking that you, you never know when you're going to find sort of you're going to hit gold and do something that really, really does make a difference. Um, I think personally, that's a really good idea. Why not? If you've got somebody who's there who can do that kind of thing, why not utilize that? Yeah. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, it'd be good, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Um, I want to talk about something we can't really avoid talking about these days. The last two years, the pandemic, obviously, it's understandable that people have become more isolated, less likely to meet up and connect with people. Is this something that you would say Engage Somerset can help with? Sorry, um, we can help with people that are isolated. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. That, If I'm honest, that's a huge part of my job. Um, I've just, <laughs> I've just literally whipped in this community hall to ask if I can borrow a fork to um, eat my salad with because <laughs> I forgot on my fork. And there's a great big group in there um, of, let's say, more elderly people. Um, and I got chatting with them. Um, I've actually got a meeting now with the with the lady um, in two weeks' time just for going in to borrow a fork. But they were saying when I explain what Engage is all about. They do feel extremely isolated. A lot of the, let's say, our more mature generation, I think COVID frightened them um, and they were frightened of coming out of the house. Therefore, they lost a lot of confidence in themselves. Um, I was... I was quite blasé to it. I had no choice working for the emergency services. I had to work right through it. But the more you speak to people now, the more you actually discover that it's affected people hugely. Um, we've still got people now that don't want to come out of their houses. So, yeah, isolation is a huge, huge thing. Um, and what we do, we have, um, like I said, the Monday walk. It's more of a stroll and a chat. I end up half my time shouting at everyone to hurry up because I haven't got all day. So they used to be shouting now. Um, as I said, the buggy walk on a Thursday, we had 14 children and seven mums last week. And again, you've got a lot of COVID babies. They're not used to being out and about. Um, and then we've got our community groups. So a lot of what I do is, is with people who are feeling isolated and, and this is just phenomenal. I've got one lady who texted me last week. She was coming back from Scotland after visiting family and she texted me to say for the first time ever she was actually looking forward to coming home because she had people to come home to because she had nobody here. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. I mean, stories like that just sort of made me go, oh. You know, just sort of, just it sort of hit you, hit you hard. But it's fantastic to hear that this kind of work is being done and having this such a positive effect on members of the community. Uh, we're going to be catching up with a couple of the partners you're working with in Chard a bit later. Um, but perhaps you could tell us about some of the other delivery partners you are working with. Sorry, I've missed I've missed you again. But you, just to confirm, just to let you know who else I work with, is that That's right? That's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, to be honest, I couldn't do my job without these people. Um, can I can I just say when I started this job, I was very very worried that I'd be lonely because I was working on my own. But the people I work with, not just the um, the other organisations, but the members of public, it, it's just amazing and made some really good friendships actually with with, with the people I work with. Um, we work alongside the police. Um, obviously, they're out in the community. They are aware of people that are vulnerable and need the extra support. Um, also, a village agents. Um, Again, they're people out in the community that work with all sorts of people. So I've had um, a few referrals from the village agent and we and I refer to them as well. Citizens Advice is somebody we deal with. Um, if you want to stop me, tell me, because I do talk an awful lot. Um, <laughs> um, um, I've actually got a meeting this afternoon with a mental health practitioner. Um, they're very interested in what we do because we can help with the mental health side. Again, people feeling isolated, it's affected their mental health. The employment services, as I've already mentioned, um, Restart and Abri, I work very closely with. Also Cosmic, they're the people that do the computer side, they're part of Engage. 
I also, when I can, because it's actually gone crazy now, but on a Thursday morning, um, there's a big teams meeting called One Team. And that's where a lot of the organisations all come together. So you'll have the doctors, the schools, midwives, police, council, housing. They they all come together. There's usually about 15 people in that meeting. Um, so they're interested in what we do. For example, spoke to somebody earlier today who runs a children's nursery. Obviously, we, we can't help the children at this stage, but there are parents that are struggling or there's parents that are looking for work. Um, yeah, so the NHS, midwives, all sorts of people. Fantastic. Oh, Julie, I know what it feels like. Um, I, I, I am a key ranter here so you do not have to worry honestly you're not overtaking me any day and it's fantastic to hear everything you are saying um th what a fantastic group um of people you have working with you as well i say people organizations um don't go anywhere julie if you don't mind because you're actually now the star of our short film uh, so let's take a look at julie out and about in chard uh, to show us the kind of things that's on offer let's take a look Hi, I'm Julie and I am the community coach for the Engage Project in Chard. And as you can see, I've been um, told that I have to sit on this exercise machine and show you what it's all about. We're currently at the Chard Leisure Centre. The Chard Leisure Centre are currently offering an eight week programme to anybody who's on the Engage Project. That's um, if you're not in paid employment, over 18 and live in Chard. This is an eight week programme for anybody that would like to join the gym and it's completely free. And that includes all the classes, the swimming pool and the fitness studio and the gym. <sighs> right, I'm now gonna take you across to Forefront, which is our little community hall. Um, but in the meantime, wow, have you seen our swimming pool? Forefront, which is a little community centre. It's a fantastic place. They do all sorts down here, um, from craft making to food parcels to young mums groups. We've got Citizen Spice upstairs. Basically, um, if you want to be part of the community, pop into Forefront and they'll be able to help you with anything. We even spend time just sitting, having a coffee, hot chocolate, um, or a cold drink, just building people's confidence, having a chat about the world and any issues they may have. Like they always say, it's great to talk. quite regularly for meetings, meeting anybody. Um, they do the most wonderful milkshakes, paninis. Um, just a great bunch of people, really. We're now at Chard Rugby Club. Um, the rugby club is where Chard Watch is hosted. Chard Watch is a fantastic organisation. It was started by a lady called Julie who wanted to explore more about peer groups and boy, has it taken off. I come here on a Wednesday. I chat with the people that come to Chard Watch and that's people that just want to make new friends, maybe learn a new skill, get more out in the community. And there's also another group on a Thursday, but they do a lot more than just community meetings. They've got their own website, so you can go on what the Watch Project. But the bottom line is, if you live in Chard, you're not in paid employment, you're over 18 years old, and you feel that we could help you, then please get in touch. 
I can help you with confidence issues, mental health, physical health, debt problems, confidence building. You tell me what you want and if I can't do it, I will try and find somebody that can. Lovely to see you there, Julie, showing us a round chart. Thank you for that. A star in the making, maybe. Um, <laughs> is there any kind of last uh, last few words you'd give to anyone who you think would need the support, maybe are not sure where to go? Is there anything you'd like to say about the video as well? Um, I've always said and truly believe that it's good to talk. If people don't want to pick up the phone, send a text instead. Um, that first step can be very, very frightening and quite daunting, but it can also make a huge difference, huge difference. I've got participants that have been proof of that. Um, the video, yeah, my worst nightmare, but um, <laughs> I think everyone's quite impressed by it in the end. But it, it is true, everything I say in the video, um, but I, I need to reiterate as well, getting back to work. It doesn't mean that you want to get back to work now. It doesn't mean that you want to get back to work in six months' time. It could just be building your confidence in order to make those steps. Again, I've got another lady. I met her probably eight weeks ago, had no intention of looking for work because she just didn't have the confidence to do it. Um, this afternoon, she's got an appointment with Abri, um, who are the employment people. So pick up the phone. Don't sit there and, you know, just wallow in in your grief or your depression i've been there i know what it's like you want to stick the duvet over your head and lock out the world it doesn't work there are people out there to help and and engage is a big part of that thank you very much julie it's been lovely having you on the show uh, and we'll talk to you again another time thank you very much thanks for having me Thank you, Julie. What a lovely lady and uh, very uh, very good information there and knowledge there on on uh, lots of uh, um, hard topics, we'll say. Uh, one of the organisations uh, who have partnered up with Engage Somerset is Child Watch, who reach out and engage with isolated adults needing support. One of the services they provide is a peer support group, which help individuals who have experienced mental health problems come together for mutual support. Uh, we will be joined by Gabrielle from Child Watch shortly, but first, let's take a look at this short film. <laughs> One of the biggest gifts that it gave me was the aspect of hope that things could be different in my life, whereas for three years it involved a revolving door of being in the community and then back on a ward and then getting a sense of stability and coming back up to home and then again being back on the ward. I basically fell into a very deep depression, as you're prone to. I was like various uh, diagnoses that hadn't been given at the time. I was living with my parents, uh, I was like well into my 30s at that point. I was not in a good place and I considered all the dark things you tend to, well, people tend to <laughs> in those situations. My front door was locked, I wouldn't answer it to anybody, I wouldn't answer the phone. I might sort of like look to see who's wrong, I might be in back, I might not, depending on how it was. And, um, and, uh, my uh, relative of mine realised I was getting severely ill, said about going to doctors. Many years ago with my own mental health, um, I unfortunately uh, lost my business and everything and uh, was very, very down, had clinical depression and I was walking along a road and with my head looking down at the ground at the tarmac and wondering where where my life was going to take me on my journey. And I looked down and I saw this little daisy forcing its way through the uh, black sticky tarmac. And I thought, 
how does it do that? Because I saw the tarmac as my de black depression. And um, so how does a fragile um, daisy push its way through? And I wish that I could push my way through my depression. Another member of the watch said to me, oh, come along to this brilliant group. I said, well, what's it like? Oh, a whole group of people get together, sit around, have an hour and a cup of tea. You know, it's amazing. And I was like, that's my biggest fear. Like walking into a building I don't know, full of strangers and being able to sit down and have a conversation. I was like, no, don't think that's for me. Peer support group, being what it is, a place of support with peers. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm going there to uh, work on my mental health. I'm allowed to be off. I'm allowed to whine <laughs> and complain about anything that's rubbing me the wrong way that week. And it's almost like a, a form of practice living. I sort of found myself there and hope, well, refound myself and hopefully helped others feel comfortable enough to find themselves there. Someone who's been mentally fragile, who is mentally fragile, who's living in the world, managing that fragility, have a different set of support mechanisms for somebody else who is vulnerable. To say, I've been there, I am there. This is how I've journeyed through. This is how you could journey through. What do you need? And there is something about when you are vulnerable being able to talk to somebody else who has vulnerability that is a much more trusting and empowering experience. Out in normal situations like in town or whatever, people will choose to cross the road so they don't have to talk to you. Whereas here it's like, oh hello, how you been? And if you haven't been for a month or so, it, you know, you still, it's still the same when you come back. To form really solid uh, friendships through that connection and you build trust with one another and it gives you a chance to kind of explore your perspectives and to take on other people's perspectives and to challenge built-in self-beliefs that you may have into changing them into a more positive sort of set of beliefs you will feel more understood by someone who understands, properly understands from their own experience. That gives you validation and it gives you hope. That's what we hope anyway. That's what we found. <laughs> I didn't notice a change in myself, but apparently uh, the people around me did and, sort of, and it felt very authentic. It wasn't that uh, we're gonna test Matthew. It's like, Matthew, Matthew knows what he's doing. Like, could you, uh, we'd like to go out this day, could you organise it for us? It's like, never in a million years would have thought I'd be in a position, as something as small as that. It gave me a hope that actually things could be different and um, moving towards something that I wanted to gain in my life and being able to achieve that and to grow in confidence and self-worth. I'm comfortable being uncomfortable now and it's thanks to uh, the journey I've been on and the people that were there with me. Very much what I want to try and do is um, be walking alongside someone and if they could walk alongside me too because there's two people in that relationship. You can come in feeling absolutely low at the lowest and then go home with a smile on your face. Over the years, we were lucky to work with organisations and the NHS, NHS and, del and actually uh, deliver self-management courses, followed by helping to set up peer workshops and uh, so that we could actually have other people have that opportunity to have a small group across the whole of Somerset. To be able to go back onto the ward and offer peer support to other people and, and, and to show them the value of hope um, that things can be different. It's a lifeline, it, it changed my life. I was in a extremely dark place which every day was a struggle to get through and now I can see 
past today. I could see weeks, maybe what I might be doing next month. I'm so far removed from where I was that it's hard to put myself back in those shoes again and not in a painful way but in a I, those shoes don't even fit me now I, I can't even remember how my feet felt inside the thing it is life-changing for me it's yeah don't know about i be able to watch so yeah I can start getting emotional now <laughs> Wow, that was lovely. Really fantastic. Uh, and it gives me great pleasure now to welcome Gabrielle. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Hello, welcome, Gabrielle. Uh, can you hear me there? Oh, okay. I can't seem to be able to hear Gabrielle. I'm going to uh, keep on talking. Hopefully, we'll be able to hear you in a moment. Um, it's, it's lovely to have you on the show. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, can you tell us how Child Watch begun and what the aim of the organisation is? So it started in 2007 and um, it was started uh, actually as Child Intentional Peer Support. Um, it was founded basically um, by Julie Matthews. And she was with a fellow um, three other mental health patients um, and they basically had the opportunity um, to have a lady come over called Sherry Mead to, um, to they were sort of funded basically to train 35 service users to learn about peer support um, with basically the hope about its value and, and what it could do in the community so it's, it's obviously for um uh, focusing on the fact that people have the same lived experience and therefore they have a mutual understanding um so peer support is on the basis that it's uh, trans it's thinking about transformative relationships and um, the re re use of relationships to see things from a new angle and and also to support and challenge each other um, so basically that, that started in 2007 and for that carried on for three years, growing and developing. Um, and it, when the day services actually closed, um, Julie Matthews and, and the, her fellow small group of, of people that were in that, they decided to start off the child intentional peer support and build on that, basically. And sort of following on for that, they had support from local organisations such as the Volunteer Bureau. Um, Somerset Community Foundation, um, also Somerset Skills and Learning, and they formed the project which is known as now is the Watch Project in Charge. And the aim is to basically be the lead in peer support, um, to reduce isolation um, within communities. And, and it's on that hopeful basis that, you know, if you have a friend, you're not lonely. So we go by the motto, it's, you know, your voice, your potential, your way. Fantastic. I love the uh, the idea you've got there as well, of helping people see things from a different perspective, using di a different method and having someone else there. Um, it, it, so often there are so many problems in this world where that is actually quite a simple solution, and yet you can't think of going there yourself until someone comes mm. in and, and sort of helps you with that. I think that's really fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Um, Makes all the difference. Yeah, uh, we've seen a short film about the peer support uh, service that you offer. Uh, could you tell us uh, about some of the other services and activities on offer with Child Watch? I know you started giving us a few there. Mm. Is there uh, any others you could tell us about? Yeah, so we're now part of the Open Mental Health Network. Um, so our, our sort of remit in that is to be the lead provision on peer support in the whole of Somerset. Um, so we offer peer volunteer training. Um, we have different courses which people can go on, obviously, um, from everything from uh, sort of courses on social anxiety to um, looking at, at people's well-being and, and IT and things like that. Um, we run um, a learning pathway on a Tuesday. Um, we also run a new members group on a Wednesday day um, sort of introducing new members into the project and um, so there's a lot of different courses that we offer and we also linked in with other organizations as well so you know it, it could be that we sort of know that there's a, a course coming up and we uh, within say the Somerset Wildlife Trust we've had one recently and people can go on a six-week course or 12-week course on from there so there's you know there's a lot of different things that are coming up and including you know in in the actual project itself which is in charge we do different workshops so we've got coming up this year 
here um, ones from everything from um, creating your own cartoon to um, mindfulness and digital well-being so there's a really wide variety so hopefully something there for, for everybody absolutely uh, and as we heard uh, the engaged somerset overall aim is to support people uh, towards uh, and into employment what kind of support can charge what sorry charge watch off people who are looking to move towards employment yeah, well, well, all of our courses are free, um, so and we're hoping that people going on the courses will gain lots of skills. It'll be a boost to their um, confidence. So we also sort of work closely with, as I said before, other organ- partnership organisations, including Abbey Housing, which are currently funding us for for three years. So we do offer things like ten week skills for the workplace and other courses to sort of support the individual. Because for us, it's all about the individual's pathway. So you know, if they're looking sort of to gain sort of IT skills then we'll look into if we can't physically support them ourselves we'll look into who we can work with to make sure that each person gets that support that they need. Fantastic Gabby well thank you for joining us today it sounds like you guys have got a lot of things you're doing for the community making a positive difference can I just say personally you've got such a lovely calming background there I can't get away from that I do love it. (laughs) Thank you very much. It hides a lot of things. (laughs) Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Next month, we will be catching up with Josh and Claire, who are the community coaches for the town of Highbridge. And on the 30th of June, we are going to be celebrating the success of Engage Somerset with a special feature coming live from Glastonbury. Uh, The Chaos crew will be heading up to Somerset for this one. So look out for more details about that. And if you're interested in getting involved in the Engage Somerset project, then contact details are available along the bottom of the screen. And remember, if you sign up, you are entitled to a free Fitbit.